Hey everybody! Today's video is about my trip to the Kiyomizudera Temple in Kyoto City. The temple is one of the sites that were collectively inscribed as the historic monuments of ancient Kyoto in the UNESCO World Heritage List in 1994. This temple originates in 778 and has been one of the most well known in Japan with its iconic stage supported by the structure built on the cliff. After visiting it, I personally found it so nice that the temple allows you to enjoy diverse experiences involving views, smelling, hearing, walking, and touching water. Best of all, they only charge you 400 yen for all of that. This is incredible and I've added Kiyomizu to the list of my all-time favorites. I highly recommend visiting this place. Okay, let's get there. You can take the bus number 206 from Kyoto Station to Gojo Zaka and walk uphill on the Gojo Zaka Road. The temple's pagoda will soon be in sight, so you'll know you're on the right path immediately. As you noticed, there are many people wearing the traditional kimono dress there. First of all, it's not mandatory or anything, so, so hang in there. You can totally go there in anything you wanna wear, so long as it's not wildly obscene or anything. Secondly, the kimono will be available as a rental at a few shops nearby, and the rental fee seems to be reasonable, like 2000 yen for the occasion, as far as I could tell from the sign. What you see above my uh, hopefully expressive face is the west gate that stands in front of the three-storied pagoda, and just at the base of the stairs is the statue of Shoun Seiryu Dragon. This is the three-storied pagoda which is 30 meters tall and one of the largest of its kind in Japan. It originates in 847 but the current structure was rebuilt in 1632. Passing by the pagoda, encountering a woman attempting to fly over it and realizing that the rental kimono is also available for males, I came to the ticket counter. Like I said earlier, the admission fee is only 400 yen, which I believe is very humbly priced for the value this place offers you. I'm now walking through the covered corridor connecting the Todorokimon gate where they check your ticket and the temple's main hall. When you reach the main hall, you're immediately standing on the famous stage on a cliff. The view from here is nice, so you might want to take a few pictures now. However, keep in mind that the signature photo taking spot is on the other side of the compound. While you are at the main hall, there's a couple of things you can do. Burning incense and enjoying its fragrance might be one of them, but I definitely recommend striking the gong. To strike the gong, you must first take off your shoes and get on the floor. And yes, appreciate the sound of it produced by the fellow visitors while you wait for your turn. <laughs> as far as I can tell, most people strike it once and then take a bow with their palms put together. I've heard that putting the palms together is to show that you have no intention of harming the person or the thing in front of you, because your hands are not usable for anything like that in that way. I was uh, in a hurry to the other side of the temple for the amazing photo spot, so I went ahead and then came back to the main hall afterward to strike the gong myself. <laughs> I'm not sure you are actually allowed to do it, but I made my second entrance with the same ticket because, <laughs> because the pathways are connected in such a way that you can do that, and the person checking the ticket was a different person the second time. That's the Okunoi Hall which also stands on the structure built on the cliff, like the main hall. I'm about to leave the main hall now to reach the other side of the compound where the Okno Inn is. The view of the main hall from the Okno Inn is probably the most picturesque of all you can get at Kiyomizdera, so I don't wanna miss it. Because you know, if you didn't get the photo, you didn't even go there. On your way to the Okno Inn, there'll be a sign showing you the shortcut to the Otowa waterfall. Now, the waterfall has its symbolic significance and you don't want to miss that either. But you shouldn't take the shortcut and miss the view from the Okno Inn. That just doesn't make sense when you've made it this far, okay? Let's take the long walk. Just before you reach the Okno Inn, you'll pass two more halls on your left, the latter of which is the Amida Hall. I don't have much to say about either of them, unfortunately, so I'll just mumble about something random for a while. There's an expression in Japanese that is to jump off the Kiyomizu stage, which roughly translates as to take a leap in the dark. 
It means that you do something which requires enormous courage and there's no telling what would happen to you as a result. According to kiyomizdera.or.jp, between the years 1694 and 1864, there were as many as 235 incidents of people jumping off the stage, right until the Kyoto Prefecture officially prohibited such an act. This was because the people believed that their wish would come true if they survived the fall. Here we are at the Okunoin Hall from which we get an awesome view of the main hall that we left several minutes ago. The stage is used for plays and dances dedicated to holiness, but it's also the main attraction for many visitors. It's supported by the 18 pillars made from Zerokova trees that were at least 400 years old at the time of felling to ensure their strength. The largest of those pillars are 12 meters tall and have a circumference of over 2 meters. Moreover, they are joined with the horizontal bars in a traditional way without using a single nail, babe. The same goes for the stage that I'm standing on right now at the Okno Inn, by the way. Are you starting to agree with me that it's insane they let you in for just 400 yen? A freaking cup of coffee costs you more than that. A freaking box of condoms costs you more than that too. After leaving Okno Inn, there's a three minute walk to the Ottawa waterfall. This walk is a rather pleasant one going through the beautiful landscape. And on this particular occasion, it was even more so with the beautiful weather and ladies. That is, ladies that I don't know, but what difference does it make? Just before the waterfall, there's a noodle restaurant on your right. Might be a good chance for you to check out Japanese soba noodles. So, I said earlier that the Ottawa waterfall has symbolic importance, and that's because it's the origin of the Kiyomi's temple. The legend goes that, in the 8th century, a monk named Kenshin received the revelation in a dream, telling him to travel north to find a pure fountain. He found this waterfall after traveling all the way from Nara, and stayed here protecting it. After two years, a court noble Sakanoue no Tamuramaro visited the site and was impressed by Kenshin's teaching, so he founded the Kiyomi's temple here. You can take the ladle and take some of the water and wash your hand, which is supposed to purify your senses and make your wishes come true, but there was a long queue for that, so I skipped it. You know, avoiding queues is my way of purifying senses. Right now, you might be going, Yo, what about this tea house? Did you go in? I did, but not these ones because they seemed way too expensive, man. Alright, let me take you to the tea house I went to. I'm on the last stretch of the walk, bringing me from the Ottawa waterfall back to the area with the pagoda that I showed you earlier, as well as the Niomon gate. This area is the entrance to and the exit from the Kiyomi's temple, and there are two ways to approach it from the outside. One is the way I did when I came, which was to go up the Gojozaka road, which changes its name to Kiyomizuzaka midway. The other way is from the Chawanzaka road, which also leads to the same entrance more or less. Now, I'm exiting through the second way and there was a nice tea house with a more friendly pricing scheme just as I began on that way. I was so happy to find it, yo. They were selling matcha tea served with some sweets for 700 yen and even this was exceeding my daily quarter for leisure expenditure, man. So I asked if I could order the matcha tea alone, to which they replied yes for 500 yen. God almighty. I don't really think you need to be told what matcha is, but it's basically powdered green tea. Due to the fact you make the tea drink from the powder instead of the leaves, the flavor is more delicate and intense. The powdered tea originates in Chinese Tan and Son dynasties and was imported into Japan by a monk named Eisai in the 12th century. Thank you very much for watching this video, please give it a thumbs up if you found it useful, please subscribe to my channel for more videos on culture, travel and music. Have a nice one, bye!